Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope all of you are doing really well in your lives and preparing hard for your upcoming exam. So in the direction of that only, I have brought to you this current affairs video which can help you in uh, clearing the exams. So let's begin. So guys, before that, let me inform you that we have launched the live classes for RBI, SEBI and NABAD. And if you are looking for any course for these uh, these exams then you should give a try to these courses because these are live courses and you know in live courses you have the facility of doubt clearing aapke mentors bhi aapke saath hote hai so interaction ka jo phase hai wo bahut zyada hota hai and you get to know your mentors well in the live classes because then you can ask questions from the mentors directly hai, okay and here mera matlab पर्सनल क्वेश्चन से नहीं था मेरा मतलब था आपके डाउट्स से तो आपके डाउट्स जितने ज्यादा क्लियर होंगे यू गेट टू फील कनेक्टेड विद योर मेंटर डायरेक्टली एंड दिस हेल्प्स यू इन यू कैन से अंडरस्टैंडिंग द टॉपिक्स बेटर ओके मूविंग अहेड दिस इज आर मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू नो अबाउट इट now let's begin with the first question and today's session is going to be really really interesting because i have so many facts to tell you so it's like the simmering cup of knowledge which i have in me and i just want to pour it out it is just eager to get out of me okay so let's begin the very first question is indian army's northern command has inducted kalyani m4 an indigenous all terrain high mobility combat troop carrier with armor and mine protection in jammu and kashmir which company of the kalyani group has manufactured the carrier so as clearly you can see in the question itself that it is this kalyani m4 is manufactured by a company of kalyani group and kalyani group is guys a conglomerate of different companies so which company has exactly manufactured this troop carrier so it is bharat forge you must have heard about this company prior as well because this company remains in the news for manufacturing different vehicles for the indian army okay now coming to this news what is kalyan m4 kalyani m4 so guys this is the kalyani m4 it is a troop carrier so it is basically a van which will carry the soldiers from one place to another place and you have read it in the question itself that it is mind proof it is attack proof we have seen the pulwama attack and uh, in order to stop such kind of miss happening from happening again we have taken we are taking various measures such as this kalyani m4 one more vehicle has been developed by none other than our tatas okay so tata has also developed this quick reaction fighting vehicle and the purpose of this is to protect the troops while traveling and at the same time it has uh, you can say missiles and guns which can retaliate against the camouflage attacks okay if there is an ambush then these uh, the soldiers the soldiers inside these van can attack back okay so that is another uh, you can say vehicle which will help india in its mobility okay indian army especially and one more thing that is ki ye jammu kashmir mein uh, ki gayi hai commission okay so northern command of jammu kashmir has commissioned this kalyani m4 vehicle now guys we are talking about kalyani group so much and i have already told you that kalyani group is an important company first of all it manufactures a lot of goods and it remains on the news and secondly because it has formed a very important joint venture with an israeli company so which company it is so guys this kalyani company has formed the joint venture with rafael advanced systems private limited now guys understand this point that this rafael has nothing to do with the aircraft rafael that we have brought from russia ओके okay, ये वाला बिल्कुल अलग है इट इज अ सेपरेट कंपनी फ्रॉम अ डिफरेंट कंट्री राइट सो इट इज एन इजरायली कंपनी एंड इट हैज फॉर्म्ड अ जॉइंट वेंचर इन विच अ मेजॉरिटी स्टेक इज हेल्ड बाय एन इंडियन कंपनी दैट इज कल्याणी सो हियर यू कैन क्लियरली सी 51 परसेंट स्टेक इज बाय इंडियंस एंड 49 परसेंट स्टेक इज बाय राफेल नाउ वाई एम आई टेलिंग यू दिस first of all let's understand this point that both of these companies have created another company which is a joint venture which is known as craft craft is kalyani rafael advanced systems which you can clearly see here now this was formed in 2017 and the basic purpose behind for, uh, forming this craft is to manufacture the anti tank missiles now anti tank missiles are the missiles which are used to 
hit the tanks because that is the anti tank to tanks ko maarne ke liye hi ye missiles create ki jati hai ya to tanks ko maarenge ya fir heavy armored vehicles ke liye ye missile use hogi so in order to manufacture those missiles class was established and the manufacturing facility of that was established in hyderabad okay so i hope this much is clear one more thing that is important that before this facility Kalyani Group and Rafale, both of them have already collaborated for establishing an artillery gun manufacturing facility in Pune. So these are two facilities which uh, Kalyani Group has established with this Israeli company. Now coming back to the question, why did I tell you the stakeholding? Now understand this point, guys, that this class was established in order to produce the anti-tank missiles in India as well as export them to the Southeast Asia. So obviously business will be और बिजनेस बनेगा तो मेजॉरिटी पैसा मेजॉरिटी स्टेक होल्डर के पास आएगा सो हियर 51 परसेंट स्टेक इज हेल्ड बाय द कल्याणी ग्रुप्स ऑब्वियसली द द मनी दैट वी आर इन्वेस्टिंग इनटू दिस क्लास कंपनी दैट इज कमिंग बैक टू इंडिया इट्स एंड एट द सेम टाइम वी आर आल्सो गेटिंग द टेक्नोलॉजी फ्रॉम दिस इजरायली कंपनी एंड वी ऑल नो दैट इन टेक्नोलॉजी इजरायली का हाथ कोई नहीं पकड़ सकता इसराइल इज वेरी मच अहेड एज फार एज द डिफेंस टेक्नोलॉजी इज कंसर्न सो हियर इट इज अ विन विन सिचुएशन फॉर इंडिया so i hope that you have found this information useful but it is not at all complete now i mean i want to say ki abhi yahan par to picture shuru hui hai puri video mein bahut sari information hai jo aapke liye bahut useful hai so let's be move to the second question the second question is how many women are targeted by nascom foundation and american express under their women empowerment through technology project so here guys 700 is the right answer option d is the right answer now it is basically a very simple news very often you come across such news nascom foundation has partnered with this american express which is a payment service provider not exactly a service pro payment service provider it is a gateway uh, like uh, the american express cards we use so similar kind of service is provided by the american express like visa and mastercard provide so nascom foundation and american express both of them have collaborated to skill 700 women graduates okay now what kind of skill training will be provided so skill training in the emerging technologies like artificial intelligence machine learning new age technologies etc etc now apart from this there is one more important fact here first of all know that em women empowerment through technology is the name of this project now the another point that is important that point is that apart from the nascom or american express there are two more companies or you can say entities which are participating in this project so one is your fuel and another one is rcd fuel stands for friend union for energizing lives and rcep rcd is uh, your regional center for entrepreneurship so these two companies have also collaborated and these two actually provide are going to provide the training to the women okay so that is all now this technology based skill training will be utilized by these women graduate to set up their own entrepreneurship uh, you can say venture coming to the third question so which state is running the palanhar yojana so here guys option a rajasthan is the right answer now guys what has come or what is the recent news the recent news is not about the palanhar scheme it is about the new scheme so rajasthan government has launched a new post matrix scholarship mobile application so by using this mobile application the students of rajasthan can apply for the scholarship after their matriculation so that is one thing and apart from this uh, the e portals for many schemes have been revamped because the government is planning to revamp the e governance to use the e governance in order to provide better services to the citizens so apart from this mobile application there are many schemes for which the portals have been revamped so the schemes are first is mukhya mantri anuprati coaching scheme palanhar scheme mukhya mantri kanya dan scheme then we have the pradhan mantri adarsh gram yojana which is the central government scheme so i hope all of you are aware of this scheme that is why i have not covered this scheme extensively in this video because this is the central government and i hope you have covered it thoroughly and if you haven't done that yet do cover it okay then we have silicosis 
ग्रांट स्कीम रेजिडेंशियल स्कूल विद्या संबल योजना सो गाइज दीज आर दी स्कीम्स विच वी हैव जस्ट टॉक्ड अबाउट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मुख्यमंत्री अनुप्रति कोचिंग योजना फॉर विच द ई पोर्टल हैज बीन रिवैम्प so this scheme aims to provide the free coaching to the sc st obc and minority students in the state okay the free coaching will be for the competitive exams like upsc iit etc then we have the palanhar yojana the palanhar yojana aims to provide facilities of financial aid to the guardians of orphan children palanhar so palanhar is your guardian the one who up, uh, who brought you up okay jo aapka palan poshan karta hai usko palanhar kehte hain so uh in order to provide the financial assistance to those people every kind of assistance to the guardians of the orphan children the scheme has been launched so that the welfare of the orphan children can be ensured then we have mukhya mantri kanyadan yojana iske andar the state provides the financial assistance to the poor families so that they can marry off their girls then we have silicosis grant scheme which provides the financial assistance for the treatment uh, to the patients of this disease so silicosis disease kya hoti hai this is your question you are going to tell me in the comment section below okay search a bit apna dimag bhi thoda use karo taki usko uh, fodder mile theek hai jitna zyada aap use karoge utna zyada acha chalega aapka dimag now the next scheme is vidya sambhal scheme so vidya sambhal scheme is basically to appoint the guest faculties in schools and colleges so that the syllabus can be completed so in order to fulfill the gap in the faculty and the teacher pupil ratio the more and more teachers will be hired under the vidya sambal scheme now there is one more uh, you can say flagship scheme of the state of rajasthan and that is your indira gandhi rasoi scheme under which the meal is provided to the poor people as low as uh, you can say the cost of the meal is as low as rupees 8 ठीक है सिर्फ आठ रुपए में आपको पूरा की पूरा न्यूट्रिशियस मील मिलेगा इंदिरा गांधी रसोई योजना के अंदर हाउ एवर अंडरस्टैंड दिस पॉइंट दैट दिस इज नॉट द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड स्कीम इन इंडिया मेनी स्टेट्स आर ऑपरेटिंग सच स्कीम एंड नाउ दिस इज योर टास्क यू आर गोइंग टू टेल मी दैट विच स्टेट आर ऑपरेटिंग सच स्कीम्स अलॉन्ग विद द नेम ऑफ सच स्कीम्स ओके सो दिस इज योर टास्क डू फाइंड इट आउट एंड इट विल बी अ रियली इंटरेस्टिंग टास्क फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू डू इट ओके देन यू विल रियलाइज हाउ मच इंटरेस्टिंग इज दिस एक्सरसाइज इन इट सेल्फ ओके जब आपको खुद ही फैक्ट्स पता लगाने होते हैं खुद ही आप गूगल को सर्च करते हो थोड़ा बहुत क्योंकि इससे आपका रिटेंशन पावर भी बढ़ता है जो मैं यहाँ पे बोल रही हूँ आप उसका सिर्फ सेवेंटी परसेंट याद रख पाओगे कल तक एंड उसके बाद आप उसका और भी कम परसेंटेज याद रख पाओगे अगर आपने रिवाइज नहीं किया तो ठीक है लेकिन अगर आप खुद कुछ चीज सर्च करोगे खुद किसी चीज को पढ़ोगे या लिखोगे तभी मैं बोलती हूँ नोट्स बनाना बहुत जरूरी है बिकॉज व्हेन यू मेक योर ओन नोट्स यू रियलाइज यू रिटेन अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग एंड यू विजुअलाइज द थिंग्स ओके सो दैट इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट यू शुड डू आपको हर चीज स्पून फीड नहीं कराई जा सकती सो फाइंड इट आउट एंड डू टेल मी इन दी कमेंट सेक्शन बिलो नाउ देर इज वन मोर इनिशियटिव or you can say a uh, thing that happened and that thing is that the state has organized a workshop in collaboration with unicef for showcasing the uh, ways for effective implementation of social security schemes through e governance portal so i have already told you that the state government is focusing a lot on the e governance and in order to uh, create awareness about this and in order to get help from the unicef this workshop was also organized okay so it basically showcases the ways in which the uh, e governance can be used for the social security schemes so we have discussed a lot about the rajasthan schemes now it's time to move on to international affairs so samantha christoforetti has taken over as the head of the international space station she is a european space agency astronaut which country does she belong to so here you have the five options out of which italy guys is the right answer so samantha christoforetti is from italy and she has taken over as the head of the iss so at present we have 11 crew members on the international space station which uh, all of them belong to different countries she belongs to italy so she has taken over that 
Now guys, we are talking about the International Space Station. So there is a very interesting fact about it. First of all, let me tell you the launch date. It was launched in 1998 and soon it is going to decommission. So ISS will be decommissioned in 2031. So that is also going to be a remarkable date and an important date for all of you to remember because in your examination, you can expect such a question. Now the interesting fact which I was talking about. So did you know this fact that ISS is not the only space station at present in the low earth orbit? I hope all of you are aware of it. But did you know that before ISS, there were three countries uh, which had their own individual space stations, okay? Not exactly three countries because the third one is China, which has recently launched its space station. So there were two countries, US and Russia. So US uh, space station was Skylab. And Russia's space station was, I don't remember the name exactly right now. So I hope you will search it out. But Russia's space station was also there in the low earth orbit, which was later on decommissioned. And right now we have the International Space Station, which was created by 15 countries. But, but remember, 15 countries ne banaya tha, but at present the use of this space station is uh, done by many countries across the world world okay not only it is restricted to the european union and the us many countries are taking advantage of the iss research and everything okay but remember that the participating countries the founding fa fathers of you can say the iss were 15 countries in total so i hope you have liked these facts now remember that us had launched its individual uh, space station russia had launched it and china is the third country in the world to launch its space station china was also the third country in the world to host its flag on moon through its chang e5 space mission okay so that was also another uh, you can say milestone or achievement for china now what is the name of chinese space station this is your question do tell me in the comment section below the next question is recently World Economic Forum has released the Education 4.0 report in collaboration with United Nations Children's Education Fund and UA, uh, which is an initiative. So when was the Education 4.0 India initiative launched? So guys, the right answer here is 2017. No, sorry, 2018. The right answer is 2020. Not 2017 or 2018, it's 2020. Okay, first of all, we are going to discuss about this report. So World Economic Forum has released this Education 4.2 report along with your UNI UNICEF and UA. Now, what is this Education 4.0 initiative exactly which we are talking about? So Education 4.0, have you ever heard about Industry 4.0? So it is the fourth revolution of industry that we are seeing as of now. And in this fourth revolution, we are seeing the emerging technologies, the artificial intelligence, machine learning, digital technologies, all of which are revolutionizing the industrial space, right? Now, Education 4.0 is also related to that because now we are using these technology in the sphere of education. So how are we going to do that? This is exactly Education 4.0, okay? You must have noticed this fact also that after COVID, many of the education platforms have come on YouTube and now YouTube has become you can say an encyclopedia of information. You can extract every kind of information on YouTube, which is actually a boon for all of us, okay? So utilize the platform of YouTube, Google, because now many, many, uh, you can say content creators have come on the platform and at the same time, content is also available. But this content available, content use बनाने में ठीक है कौन सा कंटेंट आपको यूज करना है एग्जाम के लिए ओके कमिंग बैक टू द न्यूज सो एजुकेशन 4.0 इंडिया इनिशिएटिव वाज लॉन्च्ड इन मई 2020 एंड इट हैज बेसिकली कन्वीन्ड ओवर 40 पार्टनर्स फ्रॉम द एजुकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी गवर्नमेंट एंड एकेडमिक एंड स्टार्टअप कम्युनिटीज नाउ द द बेसिक पर्पस इज टू क्रिएट टेक्नोलॉजीज व्हिच कैन बी यूज्ड in the education sphere or the existing technologies which we can use in the existing uh, in the education field now why are we discussing about this report or what is the content of this report because this education 4.0 report is entirely focusing on india and the education 4.0 initiative so according to this report guys the school to work transition what is school to work transition 
school to work transition is basically creating the school students uh, in such a manner or making the school students ready for the industry for the job so how can we do that by providing them the vocational education so according to this report the school to work transition is not going smoothly in india it is facing many hurdles first of all because of the school closures the school hi nahi khulenge to kisi bhi type ki training ya education aapko kaise milegi स्कूल क्लोजर्स है एंड एट द सेम टाइम वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग भी नहीं दी जा रही है काफी सारे स्कूल्स में सो दैट इज ऑल्सो अ हर्डल बिकॉज वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग इज नॉट इन वोकेशन एज ऑफ नाउ दैट्स द ट्रूथ ऑफ इंडिया एंड इट नीड्स टू इम्बाइब दैट ओके मेनी कमीशन इन द पास्ट बी इट द कोठारी कमीशन बी इट द मुदालियर कमीशन एवरी काइंड ऑफ एजुकेशन कमीशन दैट वॉज फॉर्म Every commission has recommended this to introduce the vocational studies in the school curriculum and at the university level. But God knows what is stopping our Indian government, what is stopping our education ministry from implementing that in the education system. So that is all what the report is saying. Apart from this, there is one uh, you can say numerical fact also that India has more than sixty million secondary and higher secondary students. but 85% of the schools are yet to implement the vocational courses as part of their curriculum so that's the reality now can any one of you suggest me what are the measures through which we can implement the vocational studies in the schools pan india efficiently suppose this is a descriptive question in your esi paper of upcoming nabard 2022 so mention your pointers keeping that thing in mind okay keeping th that your nabard exam is in your hand or you are answering the question in the nabard esi paper okay the sixth question that we are having is what is the theme of the international day of girl child 2022 so here the theme is our time is now our rights and our future now do you know what is the date the date is today itself so it is the international day of the girl child now on that note you are going to tell me what is the sex ratio in india this is your task do tell me the seventh question is where is the indira gandhi memorial tulip garden located so here guys this is located in jammu and kashmir now why are we discussing about it because the news is not at all related to this first of all let me tell you the current news the current news is that jammu and kashmir has celebrated its first ever bird festival at pehlgam in anantha uh, anantha district in south kashmir so let me show you the district so that you can understand it better so guys this is the anantha district the 11th number district okay so this is anantha district i hope it is clear to all of you now i will discuss this map also i will give you a glimpse of the map as well but first i need to talk about other facts related to jammu and kashmir so guys there are other festivals also which this union territory celebrates so first is bahu mela which is a hindu festival celebrated in the bahu fort in jammu tulip festival which is celebrated at indira gandhi memorial tulip garden okay in shrinagar and shikara festival at dal lake so these are the three main festivals of the state of jammu kashmir why and how are they celebrated this is not a, this is not an uh, important thing for all of you to know now jammu kashmir accession day is 27 october 1947 i hope all of you are aware that jammu kashmir was a princely state then it acceded to india okay it amalgamated into india that is why the the jammu kashmir celebrates its accession day and not the statehood day okay then we have jammu kashmir reorganization act which uh, basically which is basically the date on which this act was enacted or you can say it got the assent of the president so it is 9th august 2019 i hope all of you are also aware of the fact that delimitation commission was formed for jammu and kashmir to uh, basically select the wards the uh, you can say the uh, constituencies in the jammu and kashmir because this is the third union territory in india which has a legislature now on the basis of the delimitation commission's report how many seats have been allocated to jammu and kashmir for the legislative assembly this is your task again tell me in the comment section below because i have taught you this many times okay be it in the spotlight revision sessions or in the daily current affairs video i have taught you this do tell me how many seats have been allocated by the delimitation commission for the jammu and kashmir legislative assembly okay now it's the time to look at the map so here guys is the jammu and kashmir so 
this looks uh, you can say a little ambiguous however this is not that ambiguous because india claims these two regions as its own however these were our own regions these were annexed by pakistan and china but the true picture is this okay the land which we have under our control is this much okay this area is your pakistan occupied kashmir this area is the aksai chain this area is ladakh and the area which is in colors is your jammu and kashmir okay and this area which is named as abc guys this is the azad kashmir okay so here the 11th number district is anantag district so that is an important thing that all of you should know now one more thing is that there are 20 districts in the state of uh, sorry in the union territory of jammu and kashmir now why are these uh, uh, why is this fact important because jammu kashmir had also announced to release its district Go governance index district good governance index okay so agar district ke upar koi good governance index niklega so it is very important for all of us to know how many districts are exactly in jammu and kashmir to aap dekh hi sakte hai itne chote se area mein bhi 20 districts exist karte hain okay so do remember that fact as well now let's move ahead to the next question recently the all india institute of ayurveda delhi has signed an mou with the national institute of advanced industrial science and technology for capacity building technological cooperation and research in the field of ayurveda which country does the latter belong to so here guys the right answer is japan okay so both of these organizations have uh, collaborated and what could be the purpose to uh, basically conduct the research how, so that the ayurvedic technologies can be leveraged okay so that's the one uh, basic idea behind this partnership now one more thing that all of uh, all of you should pay attention to and that thing is that it is not for the first time that this organization of japan is partnering with indian organizations there is one uh, partnership with iit hyderabad which uh, under which both of them are collaborating for the artificial intelligence okay so artificial intelligence pe bhi ye log kar rahe hain with iit hyderabad so national institute of advanced industrial science and technology of japan now we are talking so much about Japan. Why not look at Japan first? So guys, this is Japan and these are the major, you can say islands of Japan. So uh, I don't know whether you knew this fact or not, but Japan is an archipelago of more than or approximate 4,000 small islands. Okay, so 4,000 small islands are there in Japan. So that is another fact that is important. However, it is not the country which has the largest number of islands so do you know which country is it if you know it then do mention it in the comment section below because japan is for sure not the country having the largest number of islands under its suzerainty now coming back to this map so you can clearly see uh, the colorful uh, map of japan now japan is an archipelago which has mo uh, approximately 4000 small islands but there are only four islands which are very main for Japan. Okay. Uh, if you consider this Okinawa, then there are five. So, what are these four islands? First is Hokkaido, this one. Then this is Honshu, this one. Okay. Then this is Kyushu and this is Shikoku. These are the four major main islands of Japan. I hope you are clearly able to see it. Now I'm going to zoom it out so that I can show you the city of Nagasaki and Hiroshima where the bombings were done. Okay. So uh, on the Kyushu Island, we have the Nagasaki and on the uh, Honshu Island, we have the Hiroshima. Okay. So guys, Hiroshima Day is celebrated on August 6th because H comes prior to N. So in this manner, you can remember that Hiroshima pehle aata hai Nagasaki se. So pehle us pe bomb gira. Okay. H comes prior to N. So on August 6, the bombing was done on Hiroshima and after three days of the bombing, on August 9, the bombing was done on Nagasaki. Now, pehle bachcha chota hota hai, phir hi wo admi banta, right? So the bombing which was done on Hiroshima was named as Little Boy and the bomb which was dropped on Nagasaki is named as Fat Man. Okay. So these are some of the facts which you can remember for your exam. Okay. Because these are very, uh, you can say static in nature. They can be asked in the examination from all of you. Okay. 
moving ahead now recently nobel prize in economics has been given to ben bernick douglas diamond and philip uh, dibbick theek hai these all are americans and uh, when was the nobel prize in economics given for the first time so here guys 1969 is the right answer i hope all of you remember that nobel prize is given in six categories first is your physics then chemistry then medicine or physiology literature and economics now economics then peace okay so these are the six categories now guys there is the odd one out is the nobel peace prize because the nobel peace prize is given by oslo given in oslo in norway whereas the five other awards are given by uh, sweden in stockholm okay so the odd one out is actually not the economics prize but the peace prize however economic prize was later on added into the nobel prizes because the nobel prizes were started in the year 1901 and uh, when the nobel prizes were started only five categories were there okay physics chemistry physiology literature and peace these are the five categories in which the nobel prize was given from 1901 till 1969 and from 1969 onwards the nobel prize was also given in the field of economics okay so that is the fact now apart from this there is also a trick do you know that all the uh, dates from option a to d all these dates are related to the nobel prize kaise i have already told you that in 1901 the nobel prize uh, was started In 1833, the man after whose name the Nobel Prize has been named was born. So, 1833 में Alfred Nobel का birth हुआ था Stockholm में, Sweden में. And in 1896 he died. Okay. So, Nobel Peace Peace Prize भी दिया जाता है. But do you know that the person Alfred Nobel was categorized as the Merchant of Death? मौत का सौदागर भी कहा गया था एल्फ्रेड नोबेल को जब वो जिंदा थे उनके टाइम्स में पर ऐसा क्या हुआ कि उन्हें मौत का सौदागर कहा गया दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी आई एम गोइंग टू टच अपॉन टच इट बट आफ्टर द अवार्ड बिकॉज न्यूज भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है हम पहले न्यूज पढ़ेंगे उसके बाद आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू द स्टोरी विच इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वाई वॉज ही कैटेगराइज एज द मर्चेंट ऑफ death and why did he uh, decide to donate his wealth for the establishment of the nobel prize and the specific emphasis is on the peace prize because it is not given by sweden it is given by oslo so why is such kind of a disparity there first of all let's discuss the awards physics mein award mila hai ellen aspect john f clauser and then zellinger thankfully this time oscar uh, sorry nobel jo hai wo उन लोगों को मिले हैं जिनके नाम याद रखना आसान है वरना नोबेल प्राइजेस ज्यादातर थोड़े डिफिकल्ट नाम वाले लोगों को ही मिलते हैं बट इस टाइम सारे नोबेल अच्छे लोगों को मिले यू कैन से मतलब जिनके नाम बहुत इजी हैं याद रखना इसमें ज्यादा डिफिकल्टी आपको नहीं होगी याद रखने में ओके कमिंग बैक टू द न्यूज वाई हैव द वन दर्ड नाउ गाइज समाइम्स द रीजन आर ऑल्सो आस्ट ओके सो रीजन भी इंपॉर्टेंट है प्लीज इसको याद रखिएगा क्यों मिले हैं इनको अवार्ड क्यों इन्हीं को फिजिक्स में अवार्ड मिला है बिकॉज दे हैव Uh, experimented with the entangled uh, photons establishing the violation of bell inequalities and pioneering quantum information science uh, very difficult it is okay so what you can do is you can just pick out the keywords photons okay violation of bell inequalities quantum information science these are the three keywords just remember these three keywords along with the winners and their nationalities because this is very important nationality to aapko bhulni nahi hai ye to puchi ja sakti hai then in chemistry we have caroline l bertozzi from america martin medel uh, denmark k berry shapless from uh, america very interesting name okay so these three people have won the award for the development of click chemistry and bio orthogonal chemistry okay again two keywords click chemistry and bio orthogonal chemistry apart from this don't cram your mind into this kyunki samajh mein hi nahi aayega ye agar aap science ke student nahi hain to agar aapne padha hai tab bhi mujhe lagta hai isko samajhne mein to kafi time lagega okay medicine and physiology mein kinhe award mila so swante pebo we have discussed that prior as well so he is a swedish geneticist and uh, he is the director at max planck institute for evolutionary anthropology in germany 
and he has won this award for his discovery that at present the homo sapiens as we are we have the dna traits of our extinct relatives okay the neanderthals and the denisovans then literature any and all so she has won this award for the entire body of her work so nobel prize in literature is not given for only one novel novel or anything like that it is given keeping in mind the entire overview of a writer okay so on the basis of that she has won this award for 2022 then we have the peace prize ella uh, belatsky from uh, belarus center for civil Lib uh, liberties from ukraine memorial human rights organization in russia so these three organizations have sorry this person and two organizations have won this award for uh, their pro uh, their efforts to keep the freedom alive the to protect the human rights and their freedom last but not the least economics which is the very latest award it was announced yesterday only so ben uh, berenk douglas diamond and philip uh, dibwick all of these have won the economics prize okay so uh, okay so these people have won the prizes in economics so they have won the prize because Uh, they have uh, researched on the role of banks in the economy, especially when the economy is in crisis, and this in itself makes this award all the more important. Okay, so do remember this fact. Now let's discuss about this merchant of death. Okay, I should not say this because uh, he did not intentionally did the research. Okay, why is he said the merchant of death, or why was he claimed as such? because he was the one who worked on the explosive his family was in this uh, you can say profession of uh, working in the explosives manufacturing explosives to ye bhi explosives banate the aur explosive banate banate inhone dynamite ka invention kar diya in the 19th century so the intention of this person was uh, you can say pure because inhone jo dynamite ka invention kiya tha wo wo kiya tha taki aapko uh, mineral industry mein exploration industry mein aur construction industry mein help mile but later on the people started using the explosive the dynamite in the wars so crimean war usi ke baad hua tha usme dynamite ka bahut use kiya gaya tha so that is why he was claimed as the merchant of death and when he read that article about himself in the newspaper he was shattered and then he decided to donate his entire wealth for establishing the nobel prize and in his will he decided to keep the peace prize for the oslo okay so oslo which is the capital of norway from there the peace prize is given however it is not known why did he choose oslo over stockholm his birthplace so that is unknown now there is one more thing we are talking about peace so stockholm international peace research institute is the very important institution in the world which researches on the arms trade and the import and export of the arms across the world so that is another important fact i hope all of you would remember it now it is the time for us to discuss the last question of the day okay taman peninsula of uh, france so, uh, Krasnodar Krai in Russia and Kerch Peninsula are connected by the Kerch Bridge, which has got damaged recently. The bridge used to connect two different countries, which are Dash and Dash. So, what is the right answer? The right answer is Russia and Ukraine. So, what happened? So, first of all, look at this. This is the Kerch Bridge, and what happened recently? There was the tank. There was a tank which was traveling through it, and it blasted. so because of that it had got damaged and now the connection between russia and crimea has got uh, you can say damaged or you can say uh, abhi isko band kar diya gaya hai theek hai thode samay ke liye however it is a very important fact to note whether uh, it will affect russia's annexation of ukraine russia's invasion of ukraine or what would be the repercussion of the damage of this uh, bridge उसको समझने से पहले यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस फैक्ट दैट दिस ब्रिज इज द लिंक बिटवीन रशिया एंड क्रीमिया एंड इट वाज क्रिएटेड ऑन द स्ट्रेट आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू रिमेंबर दैट स्ट्रेट इज द नैरो चैनल व्हिच कनेक्ट द टू लार्ज वाटर बॉडीज सो सी ऑफ अजोव एंड ब्लैक सी आर कनेक्टेड बाय दिस कर्च स्ट्रेट ओके सो दिस इज द कर्च स्ट्रेट एंड ऑन दिस कर्च स्ट्रेट वी हैव द uh we have the kerch bridge okay so this is the bridge so th in this manner it is connecting these two countries okay now guys what is the present situation will this damage affect the 
Russia's invasion in Ukraine. So, guys, this is the picture of August, October 20, uh, October 2nd. You can clearly see this much area is under Russia's control. Okay, so obviously Russia does not need exactly this region to go to Crimea. However, this was the shortest distance. That should be kept into mind. Now Russia will have to travel through this region if the bridge is not, uh, you can say, built again in the uh, quick manner. Okay, now we have the latest, uh, you can say, picture. First of all, pay attention to this Lyman, Lyman city. Okay. So, these blue, a this blue area represents the Ukrainian forces. Okay. So, here you can see that Ukraine is, uh, uh, Ukraine is uh, deterring against Russia. Or ab yahan pe aapko dikha hai ki Lyman city ko puri tarah se Ukraine ne apne kabze mein kar liya. Okay. So, that's the present situation. However, when will this war uh, end? This is something which the world and the god, god knows not the world but putin and the god knows okay so on that note let's end this session which has got stretched a little bit i'm sorry for that thank you so much for watching this video have a good day keep learning